Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my sewing room. I'm so happy to have you here today. Today is Friday, July 22nd, 2022, and this is another Granny Square Along episode, and this one is all about pillows. But first, before we started talking about pillows, I wanted to show you that I have uh, progress on my starters. Um, I'm up to round three now. So I only have to do the fourth round. On Instagram, I showed you when I did round two, on my last Granny Square Along, I, sh I introduced the starters and talked about those on my last Granny Square Along episode, which was a couple, three weeks ago. And anyway, I just wanted to show you my progress. And this is really fun, how they're all looking. And so once again, I've used a starter in all of 32 of my colors and then I did a second round with all 32 of the colors and then you know mixed it all up again and have the third round done with all 32 and then I'll do the same thing with the fourth. So I have kept track of what I've done I've written down so let me know if you'd like me to after I finish these if you'd like me to do another little print off like this um, so that you can add to your clipboards or your binders or whatever that you're, you know, keeping your little instructions on that I've given you. And if you're interested in that, I mean, there's a, a bajillion possibilities. And I really didn't plan it, plan anything. I just picked them up and crocheted the next round and just kept track of what I, what color I already used. So for instance, I had two bowls and I had one of every color in one bowl and then I just picked up a granny, did a third round and this happens to be basil and so when I used basil I threw it in the empty bowl and then started these. This was an already used bowl and this was one that can be used and that's how I did it so it's pretty easy. But that way I knew that I used every color once and I used all of them. But if you'd like me to just write down what I did, which is just, you know, it'll end up with 32 granny squares and do a print off for that, I can certainly do that. Just let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do that. And I've seen a lot of your starters on Instagram and it's really fun to see that. I've seen a lot of you uh, buying vintage muffin tins and spray painting them too as well, which is kind of fun. I've shown these forever and ever because I've used these for a long time because I use them for sorting my scraps and my quilts and my bonus sewing and things like that too. But I just think they're the best little sorters and I have them in all different sizes. So, okay, enough about that progress. Let's talk about pillows. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was how I, well, how I, how I make my pillows is the same as how I make these little, let me pull these in. I want to show you two different ways to make pillows today. So how I basically construct my pillows is the same that I showed you, I have shown you in previous pillow episode. And what it is, is I'm just, this is the same as my pin cushions, or they can be little pillows. So what I've done is I've just done two granny squares that match. You don't have to make them match. I just like mine to match. And so I've done two granny squares that match, and then I pick a color for the outside for the fifth round, and then that's the color that I use to close it up, okay? And so I've done many, many of these, right? For a long time but it's been a while since I've done and um, with my new colors I haven't done any that way so I thought that I would maybe do a few they could be pin cushions like this in this cute stand that I have or you can use them for just pillows but I've done a video um, for Kimberly on fat quarter shop on how to do my pin cushions plus I've shown it on my blog but let's just refresh a little bit so what I do is I just cut two four and a half inch squares and do a quarter inch seam around, leave an opening from here to here. And then I just stuff it with just regular old polyfill or whatever you want to stuff it with. And I just do, um, just slip stitch it closed 
with matching thread. You don't have to use matching thread because, you know, that's never going to show. But I do like to use a color that's very similar or closely to my last round. And so that's what I've done with all of these. You can use a solid, which I did with a lot of these. And in my tutorial, I used the Riley Blake Confetti Cotton solids because, you know, they match my fabrics. But you don't have to just use a solid. You can just use prints. You can see that I have some here um, cut already with my four and a half inch square. It's easy peasy this way because these finish at four inches. So your pillow is going to finish at four inches. And so you can see that I've just used tiny little prints to match my new colors of yarn and a, a few other colors that I wanted to make. And so this tells me when I sew these pillows up, what color I'm going to do the last round with something that matches these. So this isn't exactly jade, but it's dark enough. Let's see, let me, I'm sitting right in front of my yarn wall, so I'll grab a, a jade down, but see, that's close enough, right? That I can use that. This is for frosting, for pebble. This can be for terracotta or for autumn, songbird. This can be for raisin. Um, this is for brick and I can use any of the greens with this one, the two lighter greens, like spring green and Riley green, and then frosting for that one. And so that's what I do. I like to sit down when I'm doing pillows and just cut a bunch of four and a half inch squares. It's just as easy to cut several as it is to do one, right? So anyway, so I've got this square. I just wanted to refresh your memory on what, what I do with that. I stuff it slip stitch it. Then I take these two grannies and just like I showed you in my other pillow tutorial is I simply join them by doing a single crochet through both granny squares at the top chain. Okay and I do that on all three sides first before I put the pillow form in and this is exactly how I do larger pillows. This just happens to be a small one, so it'll, that's why I decided to do this now, so I could show you how easy it is small. And what I like to do is the three sides first, and then I just go ahead and put the pillow form in. Make sure those corners are down in the corners there, and that they're not flipped up or anything. And then course you can kind of stretch this up a little bit so that you can close it and all you're gonna do is crochet it closed it's really easy I mean a lot of people look at crocheted pillows I think and and are really worried about how you know once you've crocheted everything how you put it get the pillow form in there and how you finish it off and so that's why I want to do this video as as part of this uh, the granny square along so that you hopefully will take that nervousness away from you and you can just finish up. So what I've done here in the corner is I've already done one stitch and I'm talking about the the holes in the granny square, the big holes in the corner. And here, let me grab a granny square so I can show you what I'm talking about. So right here, okay, I've already joined both of these and then I'm just gonna continue because I want to do three stitches in the corner just like I do with all my pillows, okay? Except there is one exception I'm gonna show you today. But anyway, so I'm just, I've done one stitch and this is just a single crochet. So I'm gonna go through and do the second single crochet in the same hole, the third single crochet in that hole. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want that to be rounded right there. And I shouldn't say come out to a point and I don't know if I really should say rounded, but I just, I want it nice. And if I didn't do that, it would go in like this. Okay, and that's just the look I want for this one. And so I always, in all three corners, have three of those. And then from then on, I just go in the first chain of the top of these, and then I join into that one right there and just do a single crochet. The hardest part about this, if there is a hard part, and I just go into the top of the second one. So see, that's what the top is. It's just holding on to it. <laughs> so that's what that looks like. 
And then I'm just pulling the yarn through, wrapping around and going through the two, which is the single crochet. So this is kind of hard for me too because I'm doing it far away from me. Hang on. It's gonna be easier if I grab my yarn. Isn't this chicken yarn bowl cute? I grab my yarn bowl, put it over there. There we go. That's why yarn bowls are important. You can put them in the place that you need them. And because I'm right-handed, I always have my um, yarn feeding from my left so that it doesn't get in the way over here. So you would, I guess, do the opposite if you're left-handed. So all I'm doing is going across here. It does get easier once I get started. Um, I kind of know where to hold on to and my yarn's coming from the correct direction. <laughs> So these little pillows are fun and they're addicting to make. And like I say, that's why I found that out. It's just when I make one, I always want to hurry and whip up a few others. And making the second granny square to match the front one is fun too because I just make one that I like that's gonna go into the pin cushion and then I don't have to think about colors for the second one. I just match it up and do the exact same thing. And that's really fun. But again, you don't have to make yours match if you don't want to. And you don't even have to make the fabric match in your pillow, your little pillow underneath. If you don't want to, it could be any of the colors that are in here. But I just kind of like, uh, personally, how it looks when it matches that outside round and the joining color. But you know, there's no, there's no rules in crochet. You just do what you want to do. Okay, so I'm in this hole right here in the corner and I've done one and I started with one. So now I just have to do one more so that I have three in that corner. And I just join in the top chain of that first single crochet, pull up my loop. And then pull that off I mean, pull that through right there so that it's tied off. And then I've got these two together, and I won't do this right now on camera, but all I do is cut them so they're even like this, and then I'll thread them in my needle, and I will just weave through and a few back and forth here so that it doesn't show, and that's how I've finished off all of these right here. And so, that's exactly how I close off after putting a pillow form in, in all of my pillows. I'm either, I always closing with a single crochet. And then after that, you could even do stuff past that. You could put um, a little scallop on this if you want. I think maybe I'll run through and just show you. So that's, that's what that looks like. I think that's super cute. Maybe I'll go through and show you all of these. I'll dump them out and then put them back in the bowl so you can see them one by one. So just the different color combinations that I've done. And I like to have, and I do, I don't have all of them here. I just pulled these off of my yarn wall that you always see in the beginning of my videos, how I have these set up. But I do have one finished with every color that I have on the outside. And that's kind of my goal with these, so I have a lot to play with. They look so cute in a bowl. I've put them in a great big vintage pickle jars before to display. They look cute singly with like your little cross stitch pillows or in your tiered trays. They're really fun. And so these are just the ones that I have across the top of my yarn wall. And then, like I say, I cut these because I wanted to make sure I did one of all of my new colors. Leaf is, is one of my new colors, and so that's why I chose to do that one with that border so I have that. And so that means I'll have six more, at least, granny pillows done. Okay, so I wanted to show you those and then talk about this pillow right here. Now, this pillow is 
the one that I did a tutorial on where I used a 12 inch pillow form. Okay, just a regular store bought 12 inch pillow form. And I did just one granny square with, let's see how many rounds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I did 16 rounds. Okay, just with random colors. And then I did the same thing. I did 16 rounds on this. That doesn't mean you would have to do them the same. But again, for me, it was just easier to just go ahead and do them the same. But when I had shown you the finish of this, I used linen for the last round. And I just did the single crochet and closed it up. And then I did four pom-poms using frosting yarn for the corners. Well, and then, you know, we've had some puppies around that kind of chewed the pom-poms up a little bit. <laughs> and so I removed the pom-poms. But I wanted to show you that even with a pillow that's already made, it just has a single crochet edging going around. And so I went ahead and did, grabbed um, my lipstick, Chunky Thread, and I did a single crochet. I just did this last night. I got this idea and I wanted to show you that um, you can pick up any pillow even after you've you know, had it finished for a couple years and decided to add something to it. So I did a single crochet all the way around and then I just did the exact same scallop recipe that I gave you in my granny blanket. Okay, so what that is, just to refresh your memory, is I started out with a slip stitch and then I skipped a stitch and did four double crochet, skipped a stitch and did a slip stitch and skipped a stitch and four double crochet. So all it is is a slip stitch and four double crochet with skipping a stitch in between. And then on the corners I do five double crochet just so that it's rounded like that. Okay, and so that's what I did with that pillow, and that was fun. And I just chose that color because it was here. I kind of just chose a color that I thought would even out. But I was kind of lucky that I did linen with that because that is just kind of a neutral color, so any color on the outside would have looked nice. Thought about doing it denim, but I don't know, lipstick was just calling my name there. So anyway, that's kind of fun. So if you want to make this pillow and haven't seen my tutorial, on it that I did last year. It's here on my playlist, on my crochet play playlist here on my channel. And so that's a cute little 12 inch pillow. Okay, so you wanna take that? Okay, so this pillow, I wanted to tell you the details. This is the first pillow that I made with my chunky thread when I had just my first six colors. And then I had, let's see, I had six colors and then I had cloud as well. So I believe that's when it, I can't see any more than six colors here. And so what I did was just use six colors to make the grannies and just in all different combinations, as you can see. And this is when I first did the chunky thread to match my Let's Bake quilt for the cross stitching on the gingham, on the gingham fabric. And so what I did was because these finish at four inches after you do the fifth round, and I chose Cloud to do the fifth round with. Let's see, where's Cloud on my yarn wall? <laughs> it's probably like to the point to a point where I can't reach it. But anyway, you all know what Cloud looks like. It's just a barely off white. And so I did the fifth round. I joined these together just like I did my Afghan where the ridge showed on the underside. So that meant when I crocheted these together, I put the wrong sides of the granny squares. Wait, I, yeah, I put the wrong sides of the granny, no, I put the right sides of the granny squares together. I'm glad I brought these here to, okay, so I put the right side of the granny squares together and crocheted to join them with the cloud so that when I opened them up, the ridge showed behind. So it's just opposite of how I did my afghan. I joined them the you know, same way with a single crochet, but I wanted the ridge on this to show on the inside. And I used a 16 inch pillow form because like I say, these are four inches finished. And I just put white fabric underneath it, cloud fabric. And I just closed it up just how I showed you with the little granny square pin cushion. I did three sides, inserted the pillow form, and then I closed it and wove in the ends. 
Now you can also, I could also pick this up and decide to pick a color and do a ruffle on it or do a scallop or anything because there's just that, see that single crochet at the top there. I could easily just grab my hook, grab some more yarn and just decide to do something different with that. So I wanted to show you this. So again, 16 inch pillow form and you can just, you can get those anywhere. And I tend to get mine, pick mine up at Joann's most of the time. And when they're having a sale, I'll just pick up a couple of sizes of each pillow form so I have them. So I made this pillow last week with some of the grannies that I've already showed you. And I chose to do it with frosting. So this pillow, meaning finishing it up with frosting. So this pillow is the exact same way as this pillow is formed everything except for I did the ridge on the outside, meaning I put the wrong sides together of the granny square, just like, you know, I did in this one right here as well. So this is the exact same way. Again, I just wanted to show you this one, just scrappy happy. I did a frosting fabric um, just for my, one of my collections, one that matches frosting. And I really love how this turned out. I like how they both, look cute together, one with the ridges out and one within. And also, it might have been fun, maybe I should have done this to show you, but even though I did this fifth round with frosting, I could have totally done just the joining with like red or a white or a different color. So these ridges would have been like a different color, kind of like a quilt sashing. So there's an idea there too. All right, so those two pillows, We've talked about enough. And then this one you've seen that I made last year for my trailer. This one I did with the ridges out, just like this pink pillow right here, okay? Now let me tell you how I did this one. I picked up a pillow form. Any, you can use any pillow form, any size pillows for this um, in multiples of four. If four divides into that size, you can use it meaning um, this one is a 12 by 16, okay? And so that's what I did for this. And that meant that because three times four is 12, then I could do four. I mean, I could do three granny squares, three four inch granny squares. And then I could do four across just like I do in the 16. So what I did with this one is I bought the pillow form. And for some reason, it, um, I don't know, I just wanted rounded corners on this one. I don't know why. Maybe I just wanted to try it out and see. So what I did was went ahead and joined the three rows. So it only takes um, 12 squares on the front instead of 16, like the square and 12 on the back. So you only need 24 granny squares for this. And for these square pillows, I don't know if I told you, but I think it's kind of obvious that there's 16 on the front and 16 on the back. So you need 32 for a 16 inch. But this, because it was 12 by 16, it was multiples of four, so I knew this would work with my with my chunky thread yarn and the size hook I use, these finish at four. And so that's what I'm telling you with this, but you could use a 20 inch pillow form because that, you know, is divisible by four. You could use a 24, you know, 28. Anyway, so that's how you can kind of know what you can do. Now, I decided to, for some reason, when I crocheted these, this pillow form was just a little bit bigger than 12 by 16, even though it was advertised as 12 by 16. And so what I did, as you can see, that I did several rows of half double crochets right here, just until it laid on top of the pillow and went to the center on these sides. And then I went ahead and did it with a single crochet. And this is the pillow that I did the rounded corners when I told you there was an exception. Instead of in each corner right here doing three stitches so that it came out to a point, I didn't do that. I did in the very beginning first one and then after that, these seven rolls of single crochet, I just did one stitch in everything instead of multiplying and it kind of rounded it. And I liked that look too. So that's something that you can try. I don't know if I've shown you enough angles of this pillow. <laughs>
So there's that one, and I really love that. Um, it goes in my trailer really cute. I love how these colored ones look together. And I love how these are all just scrappy grannies and they take a totally different look. I mean, they take on a totally different look by whatever color you decided to join them in. Cash, you wanna hand me that cloud one back. This is very clean, clean line looking and makes these grannies pop. And obviously you've seen what the linen looks like and now you can see what this, this is breezy, by the way. This is frosting and this is cloud. And so I just wanted to talk about those and show you those different options. Now, of course we can make round granny pillows, but that's for another, that'll be coming later. That's for another series. And I definitely will be showing you a lot of round things after we finish up with the with the granny square along, we'll be doing round things. All right, so the next pillow I wanted to show you is a different way to do a pillow than just making making two things. I mean, two granny squares the same or two, you know, 16 granny squares the same and doing on each side. I wanted to show you something that my grandma often did and she showed me and it's really easy to do is you just to, in order to get this pillow to look like this, you can see this is on the diagonal. This is what the other side looks like. Okay. And what you do is you just end up making a great big granny square. And then you wrap it around. You put the pillow in, I'll show you in a minute, but you put the, so the granny square is unfolded and the square of the pillow goes this way and the points of the granny square this way and you just fold them up kind of like an envelope and crochet them closed. And I'll show you how I do that. So I made a small pillow, but let's talk about this one first. So another thing, another um, way that you can make really fun pillows is by, you don't even have to buy pillow forms. You can buy some pillows or use pillows that are already made or buy pillows that are already made. This is what this started out with, okay? I bought these at Target as a set of two. And I thought that's perfect because then I can do one, cover one, and then I can show you what it starts out with. And I measured it, I think it's like an 18 inch. And so I can make an 18 inch pillow this way where I normally maybe wouldn't be able to with my granny square because 18 isn't divisible by four. But again, you could do like the 16 inch and just, then just put lots of borders to fit that like I did with my aqua pillow there. But anyway, so that's what I started out with. It's kind of fun. Maybe some old pillows you have around your house that are kind of a plain color that matches some of my chunky threads that you can just grab and cover and you don't have to you know, search for pillow forms. And this way, it doesn't matter what other, whatever size the pillow is, you just keep crocheting rounds until it will fold over your pillow and these edges will meet. And then you know you can crochet them together. Okay, so I made a sample that I'm gonna show you how to do, but let's talk about this one first. This one, I just chose 12 round random colors. I started with raisin in the center and you can see that this is where it starts over again. So I just did 12, a 12 round, and then I just started in the exact same order. Okay, and it's really funny. I just randomly picked 12 colors, and it ended up being that I ended up doing 24 rounds. So I was able to do exactly two rounds with this, and then it ended with Beehive, and so that's what I grabbed to crochet it together with, okay? Now this one I crocheted together just using a slip stitch. So I just went into the top chain of these three, matched them up and just did a slip stitch. And I did it from this way and then cut my thread and wove it in. And then I started, you know, from the other corner and did all the way across here. And it was really fun and I loved doing it because I just kept going and kept going you may crochet tighter than I do. You may crochet looser than I do. So you may need one or two more rows than I did if you use an 18 inch pillow or you may need one or two rows less. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's random. That's why I want to do scrappy just to kind of see how that turned out. So I love that pillow, how it turned out. So what I'm going to show you is 
what I've got here is a 12 inch pillow form. And I've got this that I crocheted. Okay, so this is a small one. For this one, I chose nine colors and I've got them in here and I thought it would be really fun to do the blues, the blues and teals. If I had, would have used a larger pillow form, I probably would have thrown my three greens in here too. So it would have had another 12 colors. But this one, I just, it ended up nine because I threw my blues and teals in here. But um, what I did for this is I started out with Vivid. And you know, I'm sorry, in my last video, I realized that I had called this Alpine, but this is really vivid. There is no Alpine yarn as of yet, maybe. Maybe there will be, I don't know. But um, this is vivid. So I used vivid first. Then I used Riley Aqua. Then I used Breezy was the next one. And then Denim for the next one and then Leaf right here, and Songbird. See the difference between, this is really more blue, and this is kind of more of an aqua. And then I used Jade, which is the darker one, and then Peacock, which is brighter aqua, and then Sweet Mint. So I was just showing you how I, the Sweet Mint is really a minty green this breezy is more of an aqua, and then this is more of a light blue, the songbird. Anyway, so that's the order I did those in. And I ended up ending at songbird. And that's just how it ended. I wasn't able to get a full, let's see, started with that, started with that. So I, was, I did two and then like three rows three extra rows. And so how I did that was I put this down on the wrong side and I put the pillow like this, or you can put the granny like this and the pillow straight, however you want to do it. And I just folded it up and crocheted until these corners met. Okay. doesn't Right now it's not perfectly square in the middle. See how this overlaps here. It doesn't matter how you can tell is it just needs to go over one side. I cut this fat, this is a 12 inch pillow form, so I just cut the fabric 12 and a half inches, used a quarter inch seam, and then left an opening to insert the pillow form and then whip stitched it closed, okay? But as long as it meets on one side, that means when it's centered one way or the other, this way it's gonna meet. And so all I do is that's how I can tell when that's the correct size. All right, so let me grab my songbird, and let me show you how, you know, I get started with this and join this together. It really is super easy. One more thing I wanted to tell you about this is important when we're going to join together, is you need to end up, just like I did with this pillow, you need to end up with even numbers across here. So that when you fold this, what I mean by even numbers is I don't want a granny square on this fold. I want them even so that I can match. This matches to that, this matches to that, because that's what I'm gonna crochet to is those matching up granny squares. So if this, if this um, is uneven, you're gonna to have to fold the granny square there. See how every other one is folded and that's, that's, it just doesn't look as pretty. So I always end with an even one. Hope that makes sense. And so what you're gonna do is fold these like this and I start in the corner of those folded granny squares. Let me push this up farther so that make sure you can see it. So I've got these two granny squares without the pillow right here. You could even do this part without the pillow. I probably will and then just show you what I'm talking about. So it's folded like this, and I'm simply gonna go into the top of this set of three double crochets and on the other side going to the top. So the, this very start is right in that corner and you're just gonna pull those together. And this one I think I'm gonna join 
with a single crochet instead of a chain stitch, just to show you maybe what it looks like with a cute little ridge on it. Okay, so there's a single crochet. Now I'm gonna go in my next one. And I'm just, just like joining any two pillows together, I'm going through the first two loops of the top chain, and the second two loops of that chain that matches up on the other side. And I'm just doing a single crochet. Again, a single crochet is you don't wrap around first, you just go in, then wrap around and pull through the two loops. So at first when you go in, you've got those four chains on there, you pull your thread through, wrap around, and pull through. Okay, you just keep doing that all along. I'm gonna do a little bit more before I put that pillow in to kind of show you. Maybe I'll even do it all the way up. Let me set that over there. See what I'm doing is just crocheting from here to here. Trying to go a little bit slow so that you can see what I'm doing. And actually, I'm going very slow compared to what I normally do because I'm crocheting far away from me. But again, you can always slow my video down if you feel like you want to watch a little bit slower. But I really enjoy joining with a single crochet. It works, uh, slip stitch is good, it's nice and flat, but it's harder for me to just do a slip stitch for some reason. It's just easier for me to do a single crochet. Um, and the reason it's harder to do a slip stitch when I'm joining pillows together is because it's just hard to maneuver the two pieces together or to manipulate, I guess is what I should say the pillows and the edges and stuff for me with a slip stitch is just much easier with a single crochet so that's usually what I end up as my go-to. All right I'm almost to that corner. Get some more yarn for my little chicken bowl. My chicken yarn bowl. I bought that, I don't know, a couple years ago off Etsy. I have several different yarn bowls and I get in the, in the mood to use different ones at different times when I'm at home, but I usually have my my wooden one that I painted and I, that I bought from Hobby Lobby that I showed you and then I painted with my farm girl paint and tea kettle. That's the one I usually take with me camping because it's wood and I don't have to worry about it breaking or anything like that in the truck and back and forth in the travel. All right, I'm almost, almost to the corner. Got just this last stitch to do. And then what I'm gonna do is do one right here in the very corners of these big holes. And this is not a corner that I'm turning on the pillow, so I'm not doing three stitches in that. I'm just gonna pull that loop big so that I don't pull any of my stitches out. But this is where my pillow inserts right in that corner. At this point, that's where you'd wanna have your pillow. Make sure it's pulled down here all the way. Sorry, let me do it this way so you can see it better, but you know, this is like a sweater. You know how you can just kind of like stretch it over what you need to. Now with that tail, I'll just weave that in. And then let me flip it back over here so I can continue crocheting. So now I'll just fold these up. And because I showed you I'm doing it in a straight line, 
This is how my grandma taught me. You just do it in a straight line. I mean, I guess you could turn and go that way again, but I just think it's easier to go across this way and then across that way. So I did one single crochet with these two holes and I'm just gonna grab those two and do it close to the hook because I don't want to leave a big gap there and did a single crochet there. And now they're joined and now I'm just gonna continue on with the tops of those double crochet posts and keep crocheting all the way down here. And then weave those ends in and then I'll just start from this corner and crochet all the way across there and weave those tails in and then that will be finished and then I'll be right back and show you the finished pillow. Okay, so now I'm just weaving in my last little end and see I'm just weaving it in here on the sides. When you do it this way you end up having a thread on every corner when you do it the way I showed you. And then I just use my yarn needle and come up through the sides of the chains there. You'll never see it, but I just don't wanna see it from the top. And, you know, I think that's good. So that's probably woven in, I don't know, like three inches, two or three inches. And then I just take my scissors and cut all the way down there. Okay, so this is what it looks like on this side. I love making this pillow because you just make one big granny square until it wraps around a pillow that you've chosen. And that's this is what it looks like on the other side. And let's see, if it's not centered, you can just kind of, you know, just like a sweater when it fits, you gotta, when you put it on, you gotta make sure it's all stretched where it needs to stretch and go so that's what that looks like i mean you can even display it on that side too that's really cute so that's really fun and so that's the challenge that i want to give you is to find a pillow in your house or at the store already made or whatever and just make one of these granny square diagonal pillows i remember when my grandma made this the first time that i saw her make one of these pillows you know, I could only see it from the front. I didn't, I didn't see the back. And I said, how did you do that? That looks hard because these are on a diagonal. How do you do that? It just looked really hard to me. And she said, she showed it to me. She turned it over and said, it's just one big square. And then you join it like that in the back. And I thought that was so cool. And I've loved that ever since. So I wanted to be able to show you how to do that during my granny square along. And I did realize that I forgot to tell you what colors that I used in these, the 12 colors that I used. So I'll just go ahead and point these out. So this is raisin, this is lipstick, this is leaf, this is butterscotch, this is denim, this is linen, this is vivid, frosting, cayenne, pebble, and breezy, and beehive and then it starts over okay so that's the colors and like I say I think these are about 18 inch pillow forms they measure but they might be off because like I say they they came from from Target from the department store and so anyway that's kind of a fun way to do whatever size pillow form you have that you grab if it's already made it doesn't need to be a divisible of four or anything like that you just keep crocheting until they're finished, until they fit on there. But I think that's so fun. So I hope that um, I've inspired you to crochet pillows on already made pillows like this, or on pillow forms that you buy from the store and then you just cover with fabric to match the yarn like I did for my bigger pillows, or pillow forms that you make yourself with fabric and just stuff with, you know, fiber fill. And so that's, that's my spiel on pillows. And so I do wanna show you an update of my granny squares, and then I'm gonna announce the winner of the giveaway of the 19 skeins of linen and, and a few little goodies that go along with it, my knitting mushroom 
and which by the way that video for my knitting mushroom will be ready in a couple of weeks okay so here I've got I know I already showed you this granny because I had it <laughs> in the samples using you but here using it for the samples so I could show you but here I've got for the yarn I've got um, spring green nutmeg this is breezy and this is lipstick I'm going to grab my chart in here in case I forget. You know, sometimes while filming, words are hard, as you can tell. I kind of trip over my words sometimes. So there's that one. And then this fabric is B cross stitch, prim, stitch, and B basics. Okay. And I've got this block right here. So right here is Vivid yarn, this is Lipstick, this is Honey, and this is Songbird. This is from my Flea Market collection. This is from Autumn Love collection. This is from Granny Chic, and this is from my Prim fabric collection. The center one. Now this one, I decided to go, I could use any yellow for this and I could use beehive, but I had already used beehive for a lot of the outside. So I decided to go butterscotch with this one. So this is butterscotch, this is denim, this is cayenne, and this is leaf. This is from Flea Market. This is from Vintage Happy 2. This is from Cookbook and this is from Prim. So see what I mean? You don't have to match them to the colors exactly. It's just like, it's a yellow, so do a yellow. This is a denim, so you could do darker or lighter or any kind of blue, really. And this red has so many different shades in it. It could be a dark red. Could have used Riley red. I used cayenne for it. And even lipstick would have matched it nicely, too. Okay. Got threads all over these. Okay. So for this granny right here, as you can obviously see, I haven't blocked these yet, but that's okay. All right, so this is denim, this is frosting, this is Riley Red and Riley Green. This is Vintage Happy 2. This is from Stitch, this is from Flea Market, and this is from Vintage Happy 2 as well. All right. We've got Riley Green on the outside, Butterscotch, Peacock, and Lipstick. And then we've got, this is from Granny Chic. This is from Prim. This is from, oh, it's testing me now. What is this from? Flea Market. And this is from Prim. I just realized this isn't Flea Market. <laughs> I was like, that sounded wrong. <laughs> I did this print in Flea Market, but I recolored it and did this for um, B Cross Stitch. So this blue right here is B Cross Stitch. Okay. We've got this right here is Pebble, Frosting, Vivid, and Riley Red. This is B Cross Stitch. This is Stitch, B Plaids, and Flea Market. I had eight of these today to show you. I'm gonna make a really fun project that I'm gonna show you next time with these grannies. I got lots more things to come. All right, so this is, this is Riley Aqua, Lipstick, Beehive, and Pebble. This is Vintage Happy 2. This is Bee Basics. This is Prim, and this is Flea Market. Okay, last but not least, we've got Beehive, Riley Aqua, Frosting, Riley Green, and we've got Flea Market, and this is from Granny Chic, this is from Prim, and this is from Cookbook. Okay, so those, those are eight more. I'm still doing that. Um, 
once again, I'll pull these in. This is kind of my next project. And I'll be doing the fourth round on those. Again, let me know if you want me to do a chart on those colors for you. And then we've got, oh, the last thing we've got to do is Cassidy picked the, the winner of the giveaway on my video a couple, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, I believe. And when I showed my granny square blanket and thank you everyone for all of your kind comments about my chunky thread and letting people know where you got it. And chunky thread is just coming in now the, um, the reorder of that. So super happy about that. And it's just coming in now and should be quilt shipping to quilt shops anytime. Now, if it hasn't shipped already by the time this airs. And so we've got a couple big shipments coming in and this is the, first one and so I'm excited about that but um, the winner is Melanie Call so Melanie I'm gonna leave you a comment on your comment and then we can figure out how to get in touch with with each other thank you again for entering for all your kind words your comments for subscribing and please continue to subscribe and watch and like my videos and let me know what you think about these pillows. And I can't wait to see your granny square diagonal pillows, the challenge. And I will chat with you later.